In this week's video, we're going to cover some engraving basics. Whether you're customizing a piece you've milled or just making some art, engraving is a great application on the Bansom Tools desktop CNC milling machine. You can engrave in metal, plastics, wood, you name it. In this short video, we'll cover some best practices, the types of tools you can use, and approaches to engraving on flat surfaces and even curved surfaces. Let's first do some engravings using the built-in SVG support. Load your SVG file and select the type of engraving tool you'll be using from the drop-down menu. Alternatively, you can create your own tool in the tool library by adding the tool geometry and the speeds and feeds you wish to run for the engraving. With that one simple step, all the toolpaths are automatically created and speeds and feeds defined for this design. For this first example, we'll engrave into a piece of Brass 360 using our 80-degree metal engraving bit. Let's talk about engraving tools for a second. Engraving bits usually have a fine point diameter and taper out at various angles. This is an 80 degree taper, but we also stock finer taper angles. The finer taper angles will provide a greater resolution in engravings, but the trade-off is in the strength of the tool. The taper angle also comes into play when considering the depth of your engraving. Engraving depths can be configured in initial setup. Generally speaking, we'll engrave anywhere from 2 thou to 10 thou in metal. And because the bit geometry has a V-shape, the deeper you go, the wider the engraving will be, as we can see in this example. The other thing to consider is the size of your text. You can engrave using a text outline or fill like we did here, and when swapping our tools out for something like this Harvey Tool 30 degree pyramid engraver, we can go pretty small with the text. To set up an engraving like this in brass or aluminum, there are a few things to keep in mind for optimal results. Make sure your bed is clean. You can use the automated material location routine to locate the material placement in X or Y and the height of the stock. The SVG plan will automatically snap to this top stock position. You'll want to make sure that the stock itself, or at least the location of the engraving, is completely flat so there won't be any variation in the engraving depths. If you face your material, and want to then align your engraving to the top of this new stock height, you can probe the surface with your engraving bit to set an exact plan height using the conductive single axis routine in the plan setup tab. This will offset your plan to this new material height. When working with plastics like acrylic, you can get some really fun effects with engraving, especially when you introduce things like edge lighting. This engraving was also done using the finer 30 degree pyramid engraver, and the setup process is similar with a few exceptions. Because the plastic is non-conductive and won't work with our automated probing routine, it's easiest to measure stock like this with calipers and enter the stock thickness manually in the material dimension Z height field. We find this best for setting a precise height in cases like this with plastics. However, you can use the manual probing routines if you choose to do so, and drop the tool down to the top edge using a piece of paper to verify that you're just at the surface. For the last engraving tip, it is possible to engrave on a round surface with a bit of setup and making the jump to an external program like Fusion 360. We'll engrave on this pen designed by our friend Ian Schoen. To set this up, we've modeled the round surface of the pen with the exact diameter of this pen cap. We then import an SVG and align it to the center of the pen body. In our cam setup, we can use the project toolpath to then wrap this design along the model surface. In our setup tab, we'll configure the coordinate system for this to be tangent with the top edge of the pen and along the side edge of the pen. In the Bantam Tool software, we can then import our G-code and in the plan setup tab, launch the probing routines and select conductive single axis routine. We can then probe the top of the pen and click set zero for our Z height and then probe the left side of the pen and zero out our X and Y location. And like magic, we're engraving on a round surface. Hopefully you picked up some new tricks here, and we'll see you next time. Happy milling!